shy. You are not too shy. Ah, the best of the end. Okay. Oh, you will have the opportunity to come at the end. So, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to all of you. That's now our clothing session. And first, allow me to introduce you again our this year's co-chairs. So I will start with Yolanda Kakabate. She is president of the WWF International in Switzerland. Then we have Takeshi Ninami, chief executive officer and representative director Lawson from Japan. We have Atsutoshi Nishida, chairman of the board, Toshiba Corporation, you know all from Japan as well. And we have James T. Riaidi, Chief Executive Officer, Lippo Group, Indonesia. A warm welcome to all of you. And ladies and gentlemen, you all know the mission of the World Economic Forum, committed to improving the state of the world. And we were here the last two and a half days because of our mission for East Asia, and that is committed to improve the state of East Asia. And now the time in the clothing session to ask if we have something achieved, and if yes, what have we achieved? And so please imagine, next Monday morning, we are all back in office. It's hard, just before the weekend, but... And one of your colleagues will ask you, okay, now you are back from Manila, what was, what is, your major takeaway from the 23rd World Economic on East Asia. And so I will ask a question to our ambassadors of this year, our forum, and we'll start with Yolanda. What was your major takeaway from the last two and a half days? You know that I won't give you just one takeaway. Yes, she <laughs> negotiates because she is the president of a WWF. She knows how to, to negotiate. <laughs> and should we use 10 minutes to talk about only one major takeaway or two major takeaways? And she was a profi, she an expert. She started with three major takeaways, so now maybe she's allowed to make two major takeaways. Yolanda. Um, the, the most important one, I think, is recognizing that uh, the problems today are completely different than the ones last week, than the ones of uh, a month ago and a year ago, and will be totally different from the ones coming next week, next Monday, and next year. Therefore, that we cannot think and, and, and close our discussions into a box. We do need to be permanently renovating our way of thinking, looking into new options, new technologies, new actors. And because the problems will be different today, we do need to involve more young people. The, the young people who are looking at us and how we respond and how we react to be um, on a path of evolution and rethinking our responses to create their own responses. So that would be, I, I, I think, my, my main takeaway. Get them more involved is not talking about them for um, as future actors, but as present actors for future problems or future expressions of the problems. The, the second one is um, we need more Toshiba chairs of the boards. <laughs> you are an amazing man. You are an, an amazing individual who, uh, from your position of such an important company of the world, is integrating, integrating sectors, actors, dynamics, uh, technologies, options. And that is fantastic. Thank you. you you have given me a lesson. And, it's very and kind of you to say I, I, <laughs> Thank you. I only think um, that um, we need more like you. In the, in the third, I, I have to say the third, is thank you to the Philippines 
for sharing with us the lessons that they have learned, especially in this last year. It has been a very difficult period for the Philippines, but also a wonderful moment to demonstrate to us, to the rest of the world, that you can do it that you can bring sectors together, that governance is absolutely important, that the dynamics cannot be improvised if there is not a solid ground on which to build a response. And the response to the crisis in, in the Philippines has given us a fantastic lesson, um, and, and I hope we can uh, replicate that or imitate that dynamic in, in our own sites of work. Thank you very much, Yala. Thank you very much. Takeshi Ninami. Thank you, Philip. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the friends of the Philippines. Uh, this time, uh, I felt the energy and the hospitality of the uh, Philippines a lot. Uh, that was a big, big... Uh, 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 I mean, impressive thing I, I experienced this time. Thank you very much. Uh, not only the economic growth in this area. Now, what is uh, my major takeaway? Uh, I found, as uh, Mr. Riyadi mentioned, uh, this region has been uh, transforming into the uh, second stage of the economic growth. But uh, to make it uh, successful, definitely, uh, this region has to go through the, uh, some challenges. And uh, first of all, um, I think uh, uh, how to uh, deal with the uh, fair distribution of wealth. And uh, this leads to the uh, eventually emerging uh, middle class. Emerging middle class is very important to have a sustainable growth of this region. And uh, definitely, um, I believe uh, this emerging uh, middle class will play a key role to lead uh, the, uh, this region to be sustainable in terms of economic growth. That deals with the, uh, lots of social issues. Um, education, we discussed uh, in the uh, 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 equitable uh, employment. That is very important. And health care to the people. People is an asset. How to let them feel we are you know, having the uh, equitable uh, 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 growth. So I think uh, healthcare is very important. And I think, uh, I, I think uh, this region should have the uh, structural reform. I think uh, this region needs more entrepreneurs. To have more entrepreneurs, definitely the government has to implement the structural reform so with the uh, deregulation. And uh, um, I think a second challenge I would address is geographical challenge, I mean, uh, issue. Whether you like or not, this happens. And uh, to, to sustain um, peace and solidarity, I mean, uh, peace and uh, uh, stability, definitely in this region, um, solidarity and uh, collaboration of ASEAN countries has become increasing, more important, I found that. And the third challenge of this region is how to deal with the uh, natural disasters. If, because of the climate change, I think uh, we have to be more uh, aware, uh, aware of uh, its, its, uh, the, the, the uh, resilience. The resilience is very important, but how to deal with the, with the uh, natural disasters is we have to collaborate uh, 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 making use of our expertise, I mean, our know-how, our experience, our technology to, to challenge uh, this, uh, this uh, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, natural disasters. And uh, especially, we want to bring in uh, more NPO, NGO, to this region to tackle these issues. I am sure that uh, uh, this region, and uh, together with the rest of the world, uh, will be able to uh, uh, go through this, these challenges, and uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, have the uh, sustainable growth. But people is uh, the, uh, the most important asset we have to think about. Thank, Thank you very much. much for that. Mr. Nishida. Mm. 
I would like to <coughs> express a few words about my impression of the meeting and what I couldn't tell as my message during sessions because of time limitation. <laughs> Over two days, this meeting has offered talented people, mainly from East Asian countries and from many sectors of business, government, and academia, the opportunity to discuss and debate and offer food for thought on the theme of <coughs> leveraging growth for equitable growth. I am pretty fortunate enough to have participated in several fascinating sessions <coughs> with prominent opinion leaders, such as the session of climate smart growth and on a range of topics, a climate resilient future and innovation among them. As I mentioned in the session, we have to prepare for natural disasters and reduce greenhouse gases by deploying concept of smart frugal city. For future livable cities, soft power to enlighten people as to the importance of the environment could become of vital importance in addition to the hard power that provides cities with social infrastructure. We live in an age of increasing social, political, and economic uncertainty in a global, hyper-connected economy driven by exchanges of information, capital, and human resources. As a consequence, the impacts of natural disasters and economic crises can surpass over us at a faster, more destructive pace than ever before. To achieve sustainable development, incessantly creating innovation, and continuously increasing productivity are and will remain vital. Beyond this, two new capabilities might be necessary. Detection and prevention of anticipated risk. And quick judgment and implementation of appropriate damage control in the event of the appearance of unanticipated risk along with the capability to recover from a crisis with agility and flexibility. As if that were not enough, companies today must also successfully address the issue of sustainability in order for the entire world to enjoy long-term economic growth. I think this meeting has allowed us to define some new directions and to develop new solutions for achieving sustainable and moreover, risk resilient East Asia. I'm sure that it has been a fruitful meeting that, have, that has provided us with some degree of enlightenment as to how the world can realize smart frugal. So, let me close on a positive note with confidence <clears throat> that the 23rd World Economic Forum on East Asia provided great opportunities for leaders from industry, academia, and government to cooperate and to interact with each other as a human cloud, a vital network to stimulate discussion and cultivate insight among participants and to further achieve a resilient and sustainable prosperity. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Mr. Raidi. Uh, the world uh, GDP today is about $60 trillion. That's the amount of business that's being done a year. Over the next 30 years, that GDP is going to be $250 trillion. Uh, dollars. And 
wealth is about two to three times the GDP growth. So that means there will be another 500 to 700 trillion of new wealth to be created over the next 30 years. And I think this is quite exciting because there are plenty of opportunities. But I think what comes out uh, during this forum is the whole issue of inclusiveness. It is a big issue. Uh, it is going to be very difficult. It is not easy. We see all the indications uh, in terms of the Gini ratio in some of the developing countries uh, and in the last two to three years actually have deteriorated. That reflects the gaps that we have, income gaps, wealth gaps, uh, geographical gaps, uh, infrastructure gaps. Uh, we have all those issues that are in front of us. Uh, at the same time, if you look at the sectoral, uh, agriculture is huge in ASEAN. And yet in this area, you do not have the inclusiveness. Uh, at the farmer's level, they're not there yet. So, uh, you, you know, you go on and on and on again. Unemployment, especially in the, uh, among the youth. So, uh, on the one hand, we live in an exciting world. We all have this opportunity over the next 30 years. Yet on the other hand, the issue of inclusiveness is a real issue and may endanger all the progress that we have made. So uh, I think this forum has been successful. In the, not in the sense that specific actions might have been done, because if that's the case, it would have been very limited. But changing the mindsets, because actions is determined by belief system by value system, by our, our, our thinking. So together, during this uh, forum, I see that uh, people are talking about it. So you cannot leave this forum without getting that impression that, hey, you know, you know we really have an issue. Uh, so I think the belief system must be changed. So the belief system will determine what is of value that we must do together. And I think we're in it together if there's one takeaway, is to go back and say that each one of us will do something. Continue on with our, with our, with our business of, of growing economies. Uh, we do have tensions. Uh, we do have tensions in Asia today. We do have nationalism. But each time when we see problems, uh, I tell my people that focus on the job that we are doing. And it is a private sector that needs to rise up to get involved in education, to get involved in healthcare. At the, at the core of all this would be uh, developing the human capital, the human, uh, human talent. So with that, I think, I think we've achieved our, our goal. And uh, on behalf of all the co-chair, we want to thank you for, for coming out here. We hope that all of you will become very active in the future. And the next time we meet, a lot of actions that would have been done in your own companies, in your own communities as well. Thank you. So, thank you, Mr. Rayadi. So, I think we saw the, the whole broadband of all the issues we tried to raise in the two and a half days this week. And uh, we start with solidarity with the people, education, healthcare, agriculture, geopolitical situation, and flexibility, agility. So, thank you very much for that. But maybe last question to the whole podium. Um, do you miss something? Because you, 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 you mentioned that is, and we realized the same while our run up for this session, um, that um, issues changes very fast in terms of agility, flexibility. So do you miss some issue we could raise maybe the next regional summit on East Asia? Missing, missing in terms of the discussion yes. of, of this forum. Definitely, yes. I don't think there is enough emphasis on the, uh, recognizing the value of the natural capital on, on which we depend and on which every single production system depends on. Um, there is nothing from technology to food to uh, any sort of good that doesn't depend on a natural mm -hmm. resource. And that is not being valued enough. It is an externality that it's not considered in, uh, nor in the price nor in the evaluation of the process of development. And I do think that unless we get that right, mm -hmm. unless that capital is uh, 
compared in terms of uh, importance, in terms of value, in terms of relevance of any development system, we won't be able to tackle the problem at, at the root. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe next time much more about resources and the value of resources. But I think we, we talked about in the question of agricultural food security, but not with this focus you mentioned, but maybe for the next so we, we can have some takeaways for the organization team. I'd love to see that. Great. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, because we are very short in time. So as you know, the the way to to improve the state of the world of the World Economic Forum is we try to create some community of interest. That means interest on East Asia. And I think in this question we were very successful because we have had a similar successful World Economic Forum on Africa two weeks ago and look only on the social network activities. It was very high because of all the events we have had in Africa. But on the first day of this event, we were much stronger in all the social network activities than in Africa and Latin America together. So that shows your engagement in the social network, particularly the younger generation, you mentioned it here in the ASEAN region. The second is after having a community of interest to create a community of purpose. That means we promise together that we want to commit, we are committed to improve the state of East Asia. So to motivate the people, not only the participants, but the whole people and at the end, and Mr. Raidi said it, to create a community of actions. So that is my last call to you on next Monday in your office. That is not only a gathering of, of business leader, public figure, science, and younger generation. That is a community to have some actions. And so that is not the end of two and a half fruitful discussion and meeting. That is the beginning of the next 12 months hard work on all the actions we committed in the last two and a half days. So something missed, as we know from Yolanda, but I have an idea what missed as well. That is a huge, very huge thank you to our four ambassadors for this year's World Economic Forum in East Asia. A thank you to our four co-chairs for an outstanding job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I can hand over to Sushant. Sushant is, as you know, our head of East Asia in the World Economic Forum. And he will now make the closing remarks for the World Economic Forum. And let me say before, that is his last World Economic Forum, because he will leave the World Economic Forum. So a big hand at the beginning for Sushant. Sushant, it's your lecture. And I never leave. In spirit, I will always be there. <laughs> your heart will stay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these have been three days of invigorating discussions, developing action plans, setting the priorities, for making a difference. And we've been serving our commitment to improve the state of the world. And I would like to describe our sense of purpose here in one short quote of Harold Kushner. What cannot be achieved in one lifetime will happen when one lifetime is joined together. This year's East Asian meeting reflected the many connections we have, but also the many connections we need to create stronger communities of purpose, to ensure that there is economic growth with a purpose for a future of equitable progress. As they say in the Philippines, they don't only say that it's more fun in the Philippines, they also say, and I hope you will forgive my Tagalog pronunciation, Valang Mahiratna Gawapag Dinan Sa Tiaga. Nothing is hard to do if you pursue it with, through perseverance. And the success of this year's meeting is because of a lot of hard work and perseverance. 
And that's why it's the moment for me to extend a very strong vote of thanks to all of the speakers in the program, the government of the Philippines in particular, the office of President Aquino, Secretary Purisima, Secretary Domingo, and your respective departments, Undersecretary and Treasurer De Leon. I'd also like to recognize all of my colleagues for the hard work and commitment you've shown after an intense Davos for in the run-up to this meeting, and in particular two people, if I may, a Juok, who is a gentleman and diplomat by every definition, and to Clara, whose heart can't be more golden uh, than it is. I'd also like to thank our partners at Publicis Live and the very gracious staff of the Shangri-La Hotel here. So now, I'd like to wish you all a very safe journey home, and we are looking very much forward to seeing you all next year at the 2015 World Economic Forum on East Asia in Indonesia. Thank you.